This is oh a Jamaican. My. Oh, Jamaican. This is Jamaican. He was actually, this came over as about 13 kilos hidden inside a sofa from Jamaica. And so it was seized by customs and excise. How much is that worth? Go, sorry? How much is that worth? If I, was um, I worked out that if, I put the, if I put the whole lot together, I'd have about enough to fund two PhD studentships. So if money gets really yeah. tight on grant funding, I'm going to say to the vice chancellor, give me a studentship, I'm going down the Oxford Road, I'll just have to sell this lot as eights. <laughs> so what, is all this the same as that? It's all the same as this, yeah. So this is exactly how it was found in the sofa. The only reason it's got these white crosses on is obviously customs and excise slit it open to verify that what was in one that they sent off for analysis was the same in, in all of them. Um, and so they're exactly as they're found. And each one's probably well, about that's pretty heavy. five, six hundred grams. But you can have a there we go. I mean, it's pretty dry and pretty old, and you think that well, if you were looking for a really sort of potent, fresh weed, that's not really very interesting. But isn't that going to be full of CBD because it was yeah. dried in the sun? This is exactly why we wanted this lot, was because of the fact that I'm interested in the weird and wonderful cannabinoids, not high THC content skunks and things like that. Because I want the degradation products. I want the weird and wonderful stuff that's likely to have an unusual pharmacology. And so we deliberately got the oldest, driest, you know, weed that we could get hold of. Because we then give it to our pet chemists who do extractions and purifications and so on and so forth. And eventually, although this stuff is scheduled for disposal. So, for example, this is a, this is a pure THC, high THC resin. This is, we've finished using that one and that's why it's basically empty, but we have to dispose of it under controlled conditions, which is why I keep the empty pot, but if you have a smell So of that's that. a pure THC resin, That's is a it? pure THC resin. And so nice. that's around about 75% THC. How did you so get that? Skunk's only got like 15%, so yeah. that's going to kill you. That, well, no, I mean, you can keep on necking weed and it won't kill you. Oh yeah, no um, one's ever overdosed. No one's ever overdosed. But yeah, <laughs> you'll probably spend quite a long time asleep, I expect. <laughs> um, but that really, you know, that stuff really is quite lethal. Um, but that's exactly what you get from a block if you were going to do. That was that's an extraction from a high THC plant. So there's a lot more THC in there than you'd get if you produced a resinous extract from that block there. But you can have a smell of that. I was going to say, you can pass that one around if you want to. Just don't get it on your fingers and things like that because it's a bit. <laughs> it really, really, it's just you can see how it's the sort of stuff that once you get it on your fingers, you just. I mean, I can see it there, it's yellow, yeah, you'd have to, <laughs> and then you'd miss the whole embryonic chicken thing then, wouldn't you? You'd forget all about it. So you're the only one who holds the key for this then? I'm the only one who holds the key for it. Who's got my block of weed? All right, good try, good effort. Um, I'll show you, if everyone's out into the corridor, I'll show you, obviously that's kind of the first stage of the process. You've got the block of weed, the crude extract. We don't work with crude extract, it would be scientifically, frankly, excuse my language, shit, if we start putting extracts like that onto grain slices, because, you know, short of unscrewing the top of your head and pouring some extract on there, it's not going to happen. Um, and so what we actually use before we wander downstairs is from those resins, you can then subsequently purify them. So we were talking about CBD earlier. There's pure CBD in its absolutely pure form. Thank you for that the fridge. Yeah, of course, mate. This one? Yeah. I'll just leave it on top shelf. So, so yeah, so that's CBD cannabidiol we were talking about. You can pass that one around if you like. And you can see it's not resinous, it's not, you know, gloopy, it's not brown, it's not what you think of as either, I don't know, you know, soap bar or hash oil or whatever. But that's actually, you know, it's a white, pure powder. And that's what we work with, the, the pure compounds. You know, we're not a bunch of cabbage boiling hippies, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's THC. That's the stuff you're actually interested in. So that's around about that's 600 milligrams of THC. What pure THC? Pure THC. May I? You may. <laughs> um, if you if you want to take a photo, take a photo without the label because otherwise my industrial sponsors will be a little bit upset about the fact okay. that their batch numbers appear in undergraduate photographs. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's okay. about yeah about six or seven hundred migs. So you'd be looking at, yeah, I guess around about 80 to 100 fairly potent joints there, just in that. Madness. So, fairly good, some good shit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, what, that's basically the end point, and those would be the compounds that we actually work with. Um, there we go. Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, I hope that was, uh, yeah.